Hi, I'm Boston Oda Jalapeno. Today is Friday the 13th. So we're gonna have a spectacular Whoa. show today. <laughs> and it's also October, which means it is pumpkin season and Halloween. My favorite pie is pumpkin pie. So we're going to make pumpkin pie, but mini pies in a tart pan. And I call them tarkies which is something that I invented accidentally when I screwed up a recipe one time, but I love them and everyone I've shared them with loves them. So I'll show you how to make tarkies and decorate them 12, wait, 12, this is 10, right? 12 <laughs> different ways for Halloween. First thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 176 degrees Celsius, and then spray your tart pan. Now I have a non-stick tart pan here, but I still want to spray it to make sure that nothing sticks. And I laid this towel down so that I don't get spray all over the table and everywhere. Now we're going to make our crust using graham crackers, melted butter, and granulated sugar. We have a food processor here. I have a mini food processor. If you use a big food processor, uh, you might be able to put all of these ingredients together in it, but don't put all of them in the sugar and the melted butter into this little food processor all at once with the graham crackers. I did it before. It turns into a terrible mess. It's too small to handle all that. And I usually use about 12 graham crackers. A box of these, there's usually 12, but I counted these and I got 13 this time on Friday the 13th. How weird is that? So we're gonna have one extra, which I think I might just eat separately, off camera. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, I have packed it full, and you know, you're probably not supposed to pack it that much, but I'm not patient, so. Let's go. It's working fine. You just want to blend it, process it until it's like fine crumbs, like a sand. Almost there. It looks like sand to me. If there are any big chunks, you could just eat them. Yeah, here's one big chunk in here. So I'm going to give it one more round. Okay, it really is like sand everywhere. You're going to dump this into a bowl. Okay. Oh, I forgot this. <laughs> We're not going to eat this. <laughs> Don't eat it. Don't eat it, kids. Now, we're going to put melted butter, four tablespoons of melted butter. Look at how delicious that looks. I'm one of those people that could probably eat a stick of butter with sugar on top. Now the sugar, three tablespoons of granulated sugar. I know the graham crackers already have sugar, but what we're gonna do is we're going to turn this into the crust in our tart pan, and we're going to bake it in the oven. So it's going to caramelize with this sugar and the butter in there, and it's going to be really delicious. Stir it up. This is a really easy graham cracker crust that you can use for full-size pies. Tarkies are like a cookie-size pumpkin pie made in a tart pan. So, tarkies. Now you wanna take your mixed crumbly crust and put it in the wells of this tart pan. <laughs> tart pan with a measuring spoon. I'm using a one tablespoon measuring scoop here and it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of estimate how much goes in each one. I'm doing a heaping tablespoon full, but of course at the end, you know, it's most likely not going to turn out perfect and you might have extra and then you just evenly divide it. If you have one that has too much, just take some out so that they're all even. Now we're not going to leave it like that. I'll show you how to get them into the shape of the tart after I get all of this in here. So what you want to do is take your scoop and you want to press into the well. Put your finger on the side so as you're pressing, the crust ingredients tend to like go up the side of the tart well, 
tart well, you want to make sure that you have a nice firm crust because one of the mistakes that I first made and I made my first graham cracker crust was I did not press the graham cracker crumbs hard enough against the pie tin and it turned into pie soup. <laughs> All right, all of our graham cracker crust mixture is pressed into the tart pan, and now it's ready to go into the oven for 40, oh, no, <laughs> if you wanna burn it, for about five to seven minutes. What you want is for the butter and the sugar to cook with the crumbs until it forms like a nice caramelized, caramelized, sugary, little bit burnt, crust and you'll be able to smell how delicious it is. Now we're going to make our custard, the filling that goes inside the turkeys. First, we have two tablespoons of milk here and I'm going to add a pinch of salt. I'm gonna mix it into the milk because I think the salt will dissolve better. My mom always told me to put salt in desserts. I know I say that all the time, but it is true. Next, we're going to whisk our egg. I have one whole egg here and whisking is one of my favorite things to do. I could whisk all day, and I love these balloon whisks. I think they're so cute. Remember, when you bake, it needs to be room temperature. I have a nicely whisked egg. Now we're going to take three quarter cup pumpkin puree, and this is from a can. If you want, you can of course make your own pumpkin puree. Have at it. I love pumpkin, and I have made a pumpkin pie with fresh pumpkin before. It's amazing, but the pumpkin puree in a can, I think is pretty darn good. Now, you're going to add some of these spices. You can use a uh, pumpkin pie spice if you'd like, but I add all these spices and you know, if you like a little more this, a little more that, a little more have at it. I love cinnamon. I'm doing half a teaspoon of cinnamon here. Cloves. Cloves is one of my favorite spice. Spices, spicy, spices. And I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon. If you don't like cloves, don't put that much in there. The ginger. I'm going to do just an eighth teaspoon. So I'm gonna do a, just a little bit of this. The nutmeg also, maybe just a pinch, you know. Just wanna make sure that was nutmeg. So I like to mix with the whisk because I love whisking. And then I'll come back in with the spatula here. Mix it really well. You really don't wanna have clumps of cinnamon or clumps of, you know, anything really. It already smells lovely. I'm gonna scrape down the sides a bit because I'm a stickler about mixing things well. So far, I have not made a mess yet. I haven't dropped anything, I haven't splattered anything. All right, we're gonna add the milk. We have to feed the ghosts and goblins tonight. Whisk that up. Okay, there we are. Oh, no! Sugar, whew! I'm glad I didn't bake these up without the sugar. We need sugar, 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 sugar. All right, no problem, we're gonna add the sugar now. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Whew. Oh. After I said I haven't really made any disasters yet, and then I almost had a disaster. So mix that up really well. And now we're ready to fill our crust. Remember that when you take the crust out of the oven, to let them cool first before you put the filling in. Now these are nice and cool, I can touch them, see? My fingers are clean, they are, I promise you. Now we have our filling that we just made and we're going to use this lovely two tablespoon measuring spoon. Just scoop out and portion these evenly into each of these wells. Really easy to do, something you can do with the kids and if you're a kid, do it with some responsible adult. These smell so good. When the, when the crust was baking, it was like, wow. If I had company over, they would be like, what is that? Now remember, we're gonna decorate each of these for Halloween. I have a Reese's Mini Peanut Butter Cup and a Hershey's Kiss. Guess what I'm gonna do with them? Eat them? No. I'm going to put one inside one turkey and the other inside the other. This starts our Halloween decoration. 
segment of the video. I'm just gonna stick this in the corner, put this one in here. There we go. Now it is ready to bake. Into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 176 degrees Celsius, the same as we've been baking the crust at, 40 to 50 minutes. You'll know when it's done when a toothpick inserted into the center of the custard comes out clean. The crusts are already cooked, but it will caramelize a little bit more. Okay, into the oven these go. So while the turkeys are in the oven, we're gonna make our whipped cream. I'm going to use about one cup of heavy whipping cream. That's more than you need, but I'm gonna do it because I want extra whipped cream for some other desserts I'm making. I have a chilled bowl here, and I chilled the beaters in the bowl in the freezer. Now I'm gonna add uh, just maybe a tablespoon or two of powdered sugar. The turkey is already sweet, so I don't really want to add too much sugar. I think they're already sweet enough, so maybe I'll just go with one tablespoon. Vanilla extract, I just want a touch in there, like one teaspoonful, give or take. That's like how the pros do it, right? They don't even use a measuring spoon. They're just like, la, la, la. I don't want the powdered sugar flying everywhere, so I'm gonna smoosh it in here first. So you want to beat this until you get nice, soft peaks. Now our whipped cream is nice and fluffy, but we're also going to make purple whipped cream with some purple food coloring. I've never made purple before. I've made some other colors. Let's see what this color comes out as. They call it grape purple. I'm just gonna scoop some in here. Usually food coloring is very strong, so we're just going to make sure we only add a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Just one, one. Now we need one, just one. Mm. Ah, okay. Oh, how about that? I don't think I added enough for all that fear. Ooh, I didn't mean to do three more drops. Ooh, okay. See that? It's definitely coming out purple. Hmm. I'm not loving that purple, actually. It looks kind of gray. All right, never mind the purple whipped cream. Let's go ahead and just use the white one. Now we're gonna make some green candy ghosts for decoration. I have taken some green candy melts. Do you hear those, ghosts? and melted them in the microwave. And now what you wanna do is plop down on parchment paper, a spoonful of it, and then you're going to kind of swoosh it like that. Ooh. So we're gonna do a few of them here, and they don't have to be all the same, right? You can do some the other direction, and then you have variety. You want to have it thick enough so that they kind of stand up. They're ghosts, they don't have to be too beautiful. <laughs> And I'm gonna make some headstones too with these, long enough so that they can stick into the whipped cream. So I know these don't look like headstones or ghosts right now, but when we're done, you'll see. Boy, I'm really being a slob with this. But you know, that's my whole point here. Like things don't have to be perfect. So when you decorate, you know, I mean, you've seen those cake decorators and all who make perfect, beautiful cake decorations. And hey, you know, those people are amazing. I'm always amazed at what they can do. My style is just do it and however it comes out is how it comes out. And you know what? It's gonna taste delicious. Now we're going to put them in the freezer to chill or the fridge. When you take them out, they will be nice and hard and crispy to decorate. Make sure when you pull them out of the freezer or the fridge that you hang on to them because this is parchment paper, which means they won't stick. So they'll just like slide right off. So you can put them on like a baking sheet or a tray or a plate or something. I like to live dangerously. I just like do this. <laughs> See you later. So now they're out of the freezer, they're nice and crispy, and like I said, they will slide right off the parchment paper. I'm going to use black writing gel, cake decorating gel. I'm going to start with the ugliest one because at first your hand might be a little bit unstable, so do, go with the ugliest one first as practice. I'm going to make a ghost eye. Ooh, so scary already. Ooh, do you see that? You should see that from up there, I think. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one. Uh, don't give them eyebrows. Just do like dots or ovals for the eyes. Then do like a long open mouth. Or you could do it like scream, right? With that big long mouth. If you don't have this cake decorating gel, you can melt some chocolate. And like I did here, put it in a plastic sandwich bag and snip off the tip and use that to decorate with, which we'll use that in a moment. What do they say? R.I.P. And it doesn't have to look perfect. In fact, the sloppier, the scarier. 
All right, I think I'm good there. I have enough for my decorations. Those were just extras. I'm going to put these on a plate. You know, this ugly one, I kind of like it. That first one that I thought was too ugly. Oh, look, his head fell off. <laughs> I think I'm going to use these four. These will be for later, which is going... Hey! <laughs> All right, we didn't need those. See, this is why I make extra. So we have our Tarkis from the oven. They have cooled down. You can see how caramelized the crust is. So yummy. The chocolate candies have cooked in there a bit. You want to kind of use like a plastic thing to ease them out just because once they're decorated, they'll be easier to pull out. And now we're going to decorate with this melted chocolate we're going to make legs chocolate legs on this spider Ooh. i know that spiders have four let four legs eight legs cartoon spiders might only have six legs right they're kind of cuter when they don't have like all their little limbs i'm going to do one of the small eyes and so the melted chocolate will help hold that in place there you go now you have a cute little spider and the Reese's peanut butter cup, we can do the same thing here. And we have whipped cream, sprinkles, candy corn, shaved chocolate, candy pumpkin, white decorating gel to make a spider web. And you can use the decorating gel to also draw on a mummy with zigzag lines. Don't forget to leave room for his eyeballs. Sprinkles use a Reese's peanut butter cup to make another spider with gel spider legs. Use the black decorating gel to make a spider web. Don't forget the ghosts. Sprinkle on some chocolate sprinkles, use another headstone, and finally use an upside down Hershey's kiss to make a spider with black decorating gel. There you have it. So we have 12 different ways that you can decorate Tarkies. All right, time to taste these. I can't wait. Which one should I try? I think I wanna try one of the whipped cream ones with the spiders. I'm gonna go for this one here. It's calling out to me. The spider's a goner. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Look how cute that is with the eyeballs. Oh my goodness. Almost too cute to eat, but no, I'm gonna eat them. Mmm, so good. Spider legs, delicious. Mmm, wow. So I can taste all of the layers from the spider legs on down. <laughs> the crust is like this caramelized, just perfectly sweet, crunchy, cookie-like crust. And then of course the spider legs are delicious. I'm Glossy Nota Jalapeno. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. It's free. Click like and ring the notification bell so you know when I post next. Thank you. Bye. Definitely make these at home. They are delicious. I'm going to have more. Yum. Mmm. It's T-A-R-K-I-E-S. Yes, I can spell. Don't use that as a blooper. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to eat my food.